so um, the title is How Irrational is an Irrational Variety. So what is an rational and irrational algebraic variety? So this is something that's very important and fundamental in algebraic geometry, but it doesn't really, it's not, it's, it's, it's not something that has a direct analog, for example, in topology or differential geometry. So I wanna spend a little time starting by explaining what rational and irrational varieties are. So I wanna uh, start by considering X will be a smooth projective variety of dimension, complex dimension N over the complex number. So you can think of that as just um, a complex, compact complex manifold that happens to embed in projective space. And the projective embedding isn't that important, but it just means that there are a lot of sub varieties and a lot of meromorphic functions and so on. Okay, and then there's a notion of what it means for this uh, algebraic variety to be rational. So let me state the definition and then I'll explain it. So one says that X is rational if you can find Zariski open subsets U in X. So U will be a Zariski open subset of X. And another Zariski open subset of n dimensional projective space V with the property that U is isomorphic to V as a non compact, as open algebraic variety. So they're isomorphic as non compact algebraic varieties. But as soon as you go to dimension two, you get a very interesting uh, picture that's been both classically and recently the, the subject of a huge amount of activity. And so I, one way to sort of understand the landscape of birational geometry is to, uh, to look at what happens for smooth hypersurfaces of dimension n and degree d. So let me tell you what's known and not known there. So let's let X uh, in projective space of dimension N plus one be a smooth hypersurface of degree D. So what happens if you start with a hypersurface of degree two? So that's some kind of quadric hypersurface. And then it's very classical that a quadric hypersurface is always rational. It's birationally isomorphic to projective space. And then you get to this very interesting range from degree three to degree N plus one, and that's the really interesting and subtle range. So it's unknown in general, and very much an interesting open question, which hypersurfaces in this degree range are rational or not rational. So this is a, but I wanna sort of, instead, I'm, I'm, as I say, there's been a great deal of interest in, in progress recently in these questions of which varieties are rational and what's the behavior of rationality in families. But the, the topic I wanna talk about today is kind of a complementary to that. Namely, I want to, the question I want to talk about today is supposing you have a variety that's non-rational, that you know it's irrational. So for example, a hypersurface of degree at least n plus two. So the question, uh, the, the sort of body circle of ideas I want to talk about today starts with an irrational variety. And then the question is, can you measure and control, so to speak, how irrational it is? So can you say that one variety is somehow more irrational than another one? And how do you measure this? How do you compute it in examples and so on? So my question today is to the sort of topic today is we're gonna start with an irrational variety and try to understand, so to speak, how irrational it is. Okay, so how can we measure how irrational an irrational variety is? Well, let's start with the simplest case in dimension one. So let's start with a, a compact Riemann surface and then there's a very natural way to, to sort of measure how irrational it is. And this is called the ganality of C. So C will be a compact Riemann surface, a smooth projective curve. Now, and I wanna define the ganality of C as follows. So any curve, any Riemann surface can be expressed as a branch covering of P1 of the Riemann sphere. And I wanna look at the least degree of a branch covering. So given C, I want to look at the least degree with which you can express as a branch covering of P1. And that integer is called the ganality of C. But now it's an interesting question to ask, can you compute the ganality of interesting classes of curves? So for example, there's a classical uh, observation of Max Noether that says that if you start with a smooth plane curve of degree D, so its genus is roughly D squared over two, its ganality is D minus one. And again, you get a degree D minus one map to P1 by taking per stereographic projection from a point. So that's the ganality of a smooth plane curve. 
Okay, well, this the, the most straightforward uh, generalization of, um, of the ganality of a curve is just to look at coverings of your, any variety can be expressed as a covering of Pn, and we could look at the minimal degree of that covering. So we'll define the degree of irrationality of X to be the least degree so that you can express your X rationally as a branch covering of Pn. So again, we want these definitions to be by rational invariance. So we want a, a, a covering that might not be defined everywhere. It's a rational map. It's defined by meromorphic functions. But we ask that there be a, a meromorphic map from X onto Pn so that the general point has degree delta pre-images. And the least such delta is the irrational, degree of irrationality of X. So we'll, we'll define what's called the covering ganality of X as follows. So if you have a projective variety, any projective variety has tons of curves on it. So you can always find lots of families of curves that cover any variety. But we can ask ourselves, what's the least ganality of family of curves that covers X? So we'll define the covering ganality of X to the, be the least integer C, so there, there's a family so that through a general point of our variety, we can find a possibly singular curve of ganality C passing through X. And so that's called the covering ganality, a theorem about hypersurfaces. So let me state the theorem and then I'll explain who it's, it's due to. So, okay, so we take a smooth hypersurface of degree D in PN plus one. So again, that means it's defined by a homogeneous polynomial of degree D. And first of all, the covering ganality is at least D minus N. So if we go back to our example of a surface of degree two, a degree D in P3, we saw that in fact, the covering ganality is at most D minus two. So in fact, when N is two, we get exactly D minus two. So the covering ganality in this case is equal to D minus two. And then the next, um, quite the next part of the theorem involves the degree of irrationality. So let's assume that the degree, we want to assume that the degree is reasonably large, at least 2n plus 2, and x is very general. So I'll explain in a second what that is. And then the assertion is that the degree, the degree of irrationality is exactly d minus 1, and the maps you get of degree d minus 1 are by rational equivalent to just projection points. So this, this business of projection from points are um, is exactly is the typical thing that happens. So my, to my considerable surprise, Nathan Chen observed that for abelian surfaces, this is maximally false. So not only does the degree of irrationality not go to infinity, it's always at most four. So it's these abelian surfaces uh, always admit, no matter how complicated the abelian surface, it always emits a degree four map to P3. And the idea is that you can look at what's called the Krimer surface. Uh, a, you mod out this thing by multiplication by minus one, and you realize that as a singular degree four surface in P3. So even for these complicated abelian surfaces, they always have um, degree, at, they always can be expressed in a funny way as a, a rational covering of P2 with degree of most four. And in fact, Olivier Martin showed that in most cases, you can't get degree three. Um, but interestingly enough, the situation for K3 surfaces is still unclear. So I believe uh, with all my heart that the degree of irrationality goes to infinity, and that would be a very nice theorem, but uh, it's completely unknown at the moment. And there's this oldish result of Alzadi and Perola, who showed that if you take a very general abelian variety of dimension at least four, then it doesn't contain any trigonal curves. So then it's covering ganality is at least four. And a few years ago, Claire Boisin uh, found a nice way of generalizing their argument. And what she showed is that if you take um, a very general of a billion variety of dimension N, then you, the lowest ganality family of curves that covers it has uh, ganality roughly the logarithm. And she conjectured that uh, instead of a logarithmic bound, you should get a linear bound. And a couple of years ago, that's what Olivier Martin proved. 